Hey, welcome back to our study called For Kingship Belongs to the Lord. And today is the conclusion of our study. And we don't really want to talk about the fact that, you know, kingship belongs to the Lord Himself. And so as we seek to apply this passage to ourselves, thinking about the fact that God is in control, He's, He's, He's the King, He's the Sovereign, we're not, uh, we need to apply... 14 to ourselves, the lessons that we learned here. And I want to turn over to a pastor named James Smith from years past, in the 1800s, and he really encapsulated the lessons of this passage. So I'm going to paraphrase some of this, but uh, I think it really helps us to apply this. So we need to be, first of all, we need to be people of sympathy. People of sympathy. He says that they came and told Abram that his brother was taken captive. Now think of what he might have said. He has himself, he has himself to blame. You know, serve him right. He should not have gone into Sodom. Just the wages of worldliness. But not so. He at once bestirs himself to seek his deliverance. Those who walk in fellowship with God cannot remain indifferent to the sufferings and sorrows of their brethren. So that's the first one. We need to be people of sympathy. If, if our brothers and sisters are in trouble, we need to go after them. We need to help them. Not to gain wealth and power and all those kinds of things, but to lend aid, to help, to, to relieve suffering from others. That's what we need to do to our brothers and sisters in Christ. Next, we need to be people of courage. Smith says, with his hand full of servants, he goes forth against the four kings. The man of faith attempts great things. He knows that God can use weak things to confound the mighty. Abram's faith worked by love. He loved his brother Lot and dared to do this great deed. Great faith constrains to attempt what seems impossible. So here we have you know, the idea that we need to be people of courage. Abraham was a person of courage. He went out into that battle and took courage to go up against these guys because he already knew that they had defeated the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah and Zohar and all those other cities. He had already taken out those other five kings and so you know for him to go in there with 318 men and try to do this thing it takes courage and that's what we need to do as as people of God is to be people of courage. You know we should uh, our faith should constrain us to attempt what seems impossible. If it looks impossible if it seems like man you're not gonna have enough time you're not gonna have enough money you're not gonna have you don't have the skills to do that you just can't do this who do you think you are that's really what what the satan tells us right you know who do you think you can you, you think you can do that you know i gotta imagine that abram was hearing those kind of things like you only got 318 you're going up against this Psh, you're not gonna do it but he does it he's victorious because god gives him the battle that's how we win. Nothing's changed, right? If we're going to win anything in this life, it's because God has accomplished the impossible through a bunch of, you know, people who are not, as the Bible calls us. So anyway, the third one we need to do is we need to be people of power. Abram, as a separated man, dwelt in the presence of God. He went to battle as one who had come out from the holy, soul-inspiring presence. The victory is complete. Lot mingled with the ungodly, and he could not even save himself. It is the separated one alone who is able to save others. Abram's power lay in his life of faith. If we would have victory for God, then we must be separated unto God. That's what James Smith said, and he's right. If we're gonna if we're gonna live for God, we have to be separated from the world. We have to get rid of the worldly stuff and live for Him. You know, <clears throat> if we're gonna if we're gonna attain anything, then it has to be God's way and for God's glory. I mean, Abram is not he's not saying that he's rejecting all riches. You know, that's the problem with you know we gotta be correct in how we're viewing this story because. Abram is a wealthy man. He is wealthy. He's got all these people in his household working for him. He's got quite a company going here. He's an entrepreneur. He's got all this. 
all this wealth. He's got animals. He's got gold. He's got silver. He's got tents. He's, he, he is doing well for himself. He is financially well off. So, but there's a, a potential to gain more wealth through different means. Not by what God is in, but by just him battling. And he's like, no, I don't want that. And so we need to learn that lesson too. There's nothing wrong with gaining the wealth of the world, but he uses that wealth, he uses that household that he's created here, that, that, that well-fed army that he's created here to go out to battle for the Lord, not for himself. So that's the difference there. He's fighting for God. He's fighting for his relatives. He's fighting for goodness and righteousness. <clears throat> he's not fighting for himself. So that's where he uses the money. So that's a good lesson there. But that's where his power came from, his faith, not from his wealth, but from his faith in God. Now, number four, we need to be people of independence. Abram, as James Smith said, Abram took all he could, all he could get from the king of Salem, because he was the priest of the Most High God. But he would take nothing from the king of Sodom, lest he should say, I have made Abram rich. God enriched him, and he would take nothing likely to hinder him from having all the honor. This is not the independence of pride and self-sufficiency, but that of holy jealousy for the name and character of God. It is the independence of entire dependence upon God alone. May our hearts be stirred up to the exercise of it. The Lord is the portion of his people. So, what he's saying here is that we need to be independent from everything else but dependent fully on the Lord. So our independence from other people, from the world's stuff, we need to be independent of that, but we're fully dependent upon the Lord God, which is awesome. That's, that's how we need to think. You know, that's what Abram was doing with all his wealth. He's like, this is not dependent upon you folks. It's not dependent on Lot. It's not dependent upon the kings. It's not dependent on Mamre and his brothers. It's dependent upon the Lord God himself. That's where his faith was. Very interesting that this man of, of God now is growing in his knowledge of this. Now he's going to falter again, and he falters several times in the trusting of the promises, but his faith is there. He has faith in God. And he's like everybody else. Sometimes our trust is misplaced, but his independence from everything else in trusting on the Lord here is, is shown. Now, number five, we must be people approved of God. Here's what Smith says. He says, Mel Melchizedek met him and blessed him. He also refreshed him with bread and wine. Jesus Christ, the priest of the Most High God, will so bless and refresh all who, like Abram, go forth. And so they'll go forth in his name to walk, to work, and to war. What a privilege to meet the blessing priest when returning faint and weary from the struggle of faith. Many a battle, a separated man or woman of God will need to fight on behalf of others. But Jesus, the supporting King of Peace, will meet them with His help and blessing. And at last with His well done, which brings eternal blessing. So that's the final lesson we need to learn here. We need to, we need to be approved of by God. We need to act in a way that in the end, you will hear that good done, good job, you know, well done, good and faithful servant from the Lord. And that's what we need to seek. That's what Abram was seeking. He wasn't seeking, you know, he met the king. The king came out and met him and gave him, you know, a blessing, gave him bread and wine to refresh him. That's what Jesus does to us. Comes out, meets us after the struggle of faith. You know, encourages us, strengthens us, you know, by His Word. And, uh, and in the end, when it's all over, when the battles are done here on earth, we'll get to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. That's all that matters, really. Because all the goods that Abram had, all the animals and stuff like that, what happened to him? He didn't take them with him. But when he got to, to paradise, right, well done. And uh, that's, that's the true blessing that he was seeking.